In the past year, I've read several very heavy, very intense books. The Mistborn trilogy was fantastic, Babel was one of the best books I've ever read, but in the aftermath of those reading experiences, I wasn't sure what I wanted to read next. I'm at the point where I have so many unread books on my shelf that I could probably stop buying books for half a decade and not run out of things to read. After I finished Hero of Ages, I decided to start three books at once with the hope that one of them would stick. I picked The Way of Kings, Children of Time, and Light from Uncommon Stars. Way of Kings was scratching my Brando Sando addiction, newly formed, and Children of Time has been on my TBR for a million years. But Light from Uncommon Stars ended up grabbing my attention much more than the other two. I went into this book knowing almost nothing about it. It had a cool title, it was sci-fi, and I knew there was some queer representation which is always interesting in a science fiction setting. Shout out to Becky Chambers and her work if you haven't gotten into her yet. Knowing all that, I could not have predicted what a weird little nugget of a book this is. My main takeaway from my experience with Light from Uncommon Stars is that the tone that it strikes is so specific and weird that it shouldn't work, but it does anyway. The main character in the book is transgender, and she experiences one atrocity after another, especially in the beginning of the book. I was starting to mentally prepare myself for this book to be some form of misery porn, but pretty immediately it became apparent that it was going in another direction entirely. There are three, and eventually four, interlocking storylines going on at once. And they are all radically different. You have Katrina, a young transgender runaway trying to survive in the face of society telling her not to exist. Shizuka, a violin instructor who sends the souls of her students to hell in exchange for her own freedom. And Lan Tran, the owner of a donut shop in Los Angeles, who also happens to be the matriarch of a family of aliens in hiding from the destruction of their home planet. You might be thinking to yourself, surely these characters aren't all from the same book. Wrong. They are. And it works. I don't know how, but it works. The comparison that comes to mind for me that isn't really 100% right is likening this to a Bong Joon-ho movie, where you have several different genres going on at once, working in harmony rather than creating a jumbled mess. In most authors' hands, trying to juggle this type of thing would be a disaster. But everything in this book feels so natural and unforced. Beyond the genre trapeze act that it maintains, the book also clearly has some things to say about what it's like to exist as a transgender person, and as an immigrant, and as a woman, and at no point did I feel like the book was just a framework for those ideas. Light from Uncommon Stars manages to contain all that subtext while simultaneously feeling like a hitchhiker's guide for a new millennium. I'm not sure if the book qualifies as cozy sci-fi, but it certainly does feel like a nice warm hug of a story. The characters in the book are all wonderfully nuanced, and there are several points in the story where you expect a character to do one thing, and they end up surprising you. For a character known as the Queen of Hell, Shizuka is kind in ways that are completely against type. Her attitude towards Katrina is such a breath of fresh air, with her malevolence as the Queen of Hell never crossing over into cruelty towards Katrina's character or identity. It's so jarring thinking that someone trying to steal your soul for the devil would simultaneously defend your personhood and make you feel like a worthy, valid human being. You also have a romance between Shizuka and Lan, which is hilarious and adorable. There's a meet-cute moment between the two of them at the donut shop that had me sort of flabbergasted at how funny and sweet it was. The relationship feels so real, even though it's between an alien donut shop owner and the Queen of Hell. They learn about each other, they grow fond of each other, they get into fights, they reconcile, and they see each other for who they are as complex individuals with varying levels of baggage, but worthy of admiration and understanding. My favorite aspect of the book is that it doesn't waste any time presenting the abnormal as something that we as an audience need time to digest or need convincing of to accept. Sure, there's plenty of time spent showing how society at large may disapprove of immigrants or transgender people, but the author never assumes that the reader is that dumb or in need of hand-holding. By skipping out on all that really unfun hand-wringing that you might find in other books, what's left is time for these characters to be engaging and real and flawed. We don't need a transgender or immigrant character to be a moral paragon so that the boomer down the street can have an epiphany about how they're people too. These characters are who they are, and the author believes in our ability as an audience to read about them without outrage or seeing them as a charity case. Having read such heavy stuff in the past year, this book was a welcome respite from the bleakness that I had been mired in for a while. It's so rare for me to pick something up and be as genuinely and enthusiastically surprised as I was with this. 
If you're looking for something breezy but substantive, this is a great book to pick up. I haven't read any of Raika Aoki's other books, but I will most definitely be seeking them out in the future. Damn, that was a good book. Anyway, back to the heavy stuff. See you soon, Space Fighters. <laughs>